Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bible Talk Live. I'm Bill Rhodes. And this is Doug McKinney. Well, Doug, good to have you back. Now Brian's gone. Uh, that, I, I, we just can't seem to get everybody here at the same time we with can't. any kind of consistency. <laughs> uh, we certainly miss Brian when he is not with us. And Well, we're, uh, glad, we're glad you're back and had a, you had a good time away. And... I did. I had a great vacation. i um, excited. Uh, we went uh, to several different places, went to Hilton Head Island and stayed there <clears> about six days or so. And... Uh, uh, then we went to Charleston, South Carolina, and then ended up in Gatlinburg with the whole family. Uh, it was good to get away. It was good to spend time with Annette and Bill. We celebrated 40 years of marriage. Oh, wow. Just children. <laughs> just children. That's right. Just that's babies. A, well, that's good. You got to see a son who lives in the South. And you don't that's get right. to see him very often. And so you got to see a son. And yeah, so, yeah. So it's a good trip. It was, a, it was a great trip. Now, how long have you and Sherry been married? 53. 53. So that 53. is a few more than 40. Yeah, just a few more. <laughs> Not a whole lot more. I, rem I remember 40. Do you remember you, 40? I remember 40. You get back to 30 and 20, it it's, uh, gets a little fuzzy at times. But that's right. Yeah, I will remember 40, so... Well, good. And, and folks, you know this is Bible Talk Live. This is a uh, program in which we, we try to have, Bill, casual conversation. Now, that doesn't mean we're not going to study God's Word, but it was meant to be an open conversation. Grab a cup of coffee, a bottle of water, a Coke, sit down, have time together looking at God's Word. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and we do still try to do that. You yeah. know, we, we just kind of go through the text and talk about it a little bit, and, and hopefully we hit on things that uh, people are in interested in and, and uh, maybe need to know more about as we talk about it. And so, yeah, we, we try to make it as casual as, as, as we can so everybody feels comfortable. <laughs> That's what we're hoping for. We have been talking about over the last few weeks the life-changing power of the gospel. And in particular, we've been talking about studying the conversion stories of the book of Acts. We've had the conversion of the 3,000 on the day of Pentecost. What a wonderful story. We've looked at the conversion of the Ethiopian man uh, uh, who, who met Philip on, on the road and uh, was, was shared the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've looked at the conversion of the great apostle Paul. He was Saul of Tarsus and became the great apostle Paul. Remember, we're talking about the life-changing power of the gospel. Uh, we've looked at the conversion of the household of Cornelius, the household of Lydia, the household of the Philippian jailer. We, we've looked at all of these things, and, and then you and Brian, Bill, took it a little different direction, not a lot, but a little different direction when you talked about the harmony of the conversions in the book of Acts. Yeah, we did. And, uh, you know, and, and what we noticed when we were going through the book of Acts and all the conversions, they're all different. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the different circumstances, different places, different people sometimes just a single person by themselves. Uh, the Ethiopian, for example, sometimes uh, it, it's a family, sometimes a whole big group of people, mm -hmm. such as on the day of Pentecost. Uh, different things happen, different things are said. Uh, but one of the things that we wanted uh, folks to know is that despite the fact that they're all different, just like ours, I mean, you right. look at you or me or, or, or anyone, you know, it comes about in a different way, in a different place. God's always involved. Right. So we wanted uh, people to know that there's a commonality in all of them, that there's a harmony between all of them, yeah. that they were all taught the same thing, that they all responded in exactly the same uh, way, and, and, and that that uh, really then becomes important. When we ask that question, as they did on the day of Pentecost, you know, what shall we do? That's right. uh, the, the answer is there for us. It isn't a guessing game. We don't have to say, well, you know, I don't know. It looks like we can do a lot of different things. Yeah, right. Truth of the matter is that they all believed the same thing and they all did the same thing when it came to responding to that gospel message. And so what Brian and I did was just look at the harmony uh, uh, between all of those uh, conversions and you find a lot of harmony uh, in those passages. Absolutely. And I, I really like the word that you used and that is they responded in similar fashion. Yeah. And so that response is what is our part in it. We do nothing to save ourselves. That's we right. can either receive it or reject it, but we need to respond, Bill, to the things that we have been taught, which is the good news of the gospel. Yeah, and that and that's why we, we started uh, two weeks ago, or whatever it has been now, I think two weeks, we started with uh, uh, Ephesians 2, hmm. uh, that number one, we're dead in our sins. Every single one of those people who responded to the gospel <laughs> were dead in their sins, and, and then saved 
by the grace of God, for by grace have you been saved through yeah. faith. And so that becomes the common characteristic for all of them. And then they respond to that in the same way, uh, but it's always prompted by God. Yeah, amen. And so this morning you are listening to Bible Talk Live. This is a presentation from Christ Church in Bowling Green, Ohio. I said that right, Bowling Green, Ohio. <laughs> whether you're watching us on YouTube uh, or the Book of Face or whether you are uh, actually listening on the radio this morning to our flagship station, WFOB, 1430 AM WFOB. We are glad you're there. And by the way, if you are listening to us on 1430 AM WFOB, you are within driving distance of coming and worshiping with us. Christ Church meets at 14455 Campbell Hill Road, Bowling Green, Ohio. Uh, and we would love to have you come and worship God with us. And you can find out more about us at ccbg.life. That's ccbg.life. All things Christ Church can be found at ccbg.life. So we are going to move from studying the conversions and looking at the life-changing power of the gospel to today talking about the importance, Bill, of passing it on. The importance, in other words, of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with others so that we continue to pass the message on. The church, Bill, must always be about telling the good news of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. The church must always be discipling people, making them learners of Jesus. Yeah, one of the things that we'll talk about is, is the reality that this is how it's always worked. Mm. Uh, that that when, when people uh, hear the gospel, respond to it, become a child of God, their most natural inclination is to tell others about it because yeah. it, it's, it's the most exciting thing in life. It is. Uh, and, and so important to uh, every one of our lives. And so when we look at the gospel, you know, you see, you see the big crowds of, of Pentecost where people are taught in a, in a huge crowd. But when you look through the rest of it, you see people taught as individuals and families and then passing it on to others. And that is really uh, how the gospel spreads uh, uh, better than it spreads in any other way. Oh, absolutely. Our goal is to teach Christ and Him crucified and raised from the dead. Uh, this is what the good news of the gospel is. Uh, we never grow tired of telling people about Jesus because He is our Savior. Jesus has saved us. We talk about that term justification. Jesus is saving us. We talk about the term sanctification. Uh, and Jesus will save us. Uh, and, and we talk about the term glorification. There, yeah. will, there will come a time. And you've actually been preaching on heaven uh, last yeah. couple weeks. Yeah. And so we love to tell people, Bill, about Jesus. He's our Savior. <laughs> yeah, we do. We, yeah, we believe He's everything. Man, I, I, I saw an article today that I found so disturbing, oh. Doug. But it was about a, about a young pastor who quit preaching and quit Jesus mm. because he couldn't believe that Jesus is the only way and that all of the other faiths, as you talk about, who do not put their faith in him are, are just as okay as we are. He could not believe that mm. and therefore he quit proclaiming the gospel. And I thought, what short-sightedness. You believed yeah. at one time that he was the Son of God, that he was God himself who came into this world, that he gave himself as a sacrifice for all of humanity, for anyone that would come to him, mm. and, and to believe that there can be any other way to God except through him uh, is it, just mind-boggling to me. It really is. And so this morning on Bible Talk, we are talking about the importance of passing it on, passing the story on. Uh, his story and, and history is always his story. It's the story of Christ. Yeah. Uh, and his story is actually our story. We're a part of that story. It's about us. Uh, he is on a rescue mission to rescue us. His yeah. story is our story. Yeah. Uh, and we are to pass that story along. As always on Bible Talk Live, we are trying to turn people's hearts and minds back to God's Word. 
this morning, no exception to the rule. What I'm going to do here, Bill, is I'm going to read this passage of Scripture, and then we'll kind of dive into it a little bit. This is the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. He penned these words for us. But Bill, I, I want to spend just a moment. I, I say this often, and I don't always explain it. I explain it from time to time. But I say that Paul did this by inspiration. That what Paul did was he wrote these things down inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. When we say that, what do we mean when we read Scripture? Well, I, I really like the translation that, that translates that uh, uh, passage for, for Paul when he says, all Scripture is God-breathed. Mm. And, and what we mean by that is that God put into the minds and hearts what he wanted them to write. Now, the interesting thing is that you look at all of the writers of the New Testament or, or the Old Testament as well, and you see different styles. Yeah. They, they are different by design because yeah. they are individuals and, and, and they're writing in their own style. So you see, so if you read Matthew and Luke, they're, they're different. They are. They, they cover some of the same events, but Matthew uh, writes from one perspective, Luke from another. Luke is a Gentile and as a doctor and yeah. very precise historian. Matthew, not so much. He's concerned more uh, with the events rather than the time frame, the timeline uh, and all of that. But yet all of them are inspired by God, that God God put them together so that we could read them and believe it. Mm. And, and so for us, when we, when we come to a discussion about who God is or what God does or who Jesus is, it always surrounds the Word of God, the Bible. Uh, and, and so we accept wholeheartedly what it says because we believe that it's inspired of God. That is, these words are there because God put them there. Oh, that is so powerful. And when you come to understand that, you begin to treat this book differently than any other book. You do. Because it is God's Word. It is His love letter to us, uh, to humanity. And so we are in that book, and we encourage you to open the book up, as always on Bible Talk Live. We believe the answers to all of life's problems are founded in the pages of God's Word and the living Word, the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. Timothy, my dear son, says Paul, be strong through the grace... I'm going to say that again. Be strong through the grace that God gives you in Christ Jesus. You have heard me teach things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to, catch this phrase, pass them on to others. Enduring suffering along with me. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ, soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life, for then they cannot please the officer who enlisted them. And athletes cannot win the prize, says Paul, unless they follow the rules. And hard-working farmers, verse 6, should be the first to enjoy the fruit of their labor. Think, says Paul. Think, isn't, it, isn't it great that Paul doesn't want us to leave our brains at the table? Oh, absolutely. That when yeah. we walk in the door to come to church, Paul doesn't say, leave your brains outside and come on in. Just believe anything that's said. Yeah. That's not what he says. He says, think about what I'm saying. The Lord will help you understand all these things things. This is a powerful passage of Scripture. Yeah, it really is a powerful passage of Scripture. There's a lot of stuff, you know. I, I like where he starts when he says, Timothy, my dear son. Yeah. I, I mean, he really starts with this relationship with Timothy. They had a close relationship. Uh, Paul was instrumental in his conversion. Timothy is uh, it comes from a, a family where uh, his mother and grandmother were faithful people before him. Mm -hmm. And so he has learned these things through family. And, and by the way, as we talk about these things, passing them on, one of the things we're going to talk about is how important that is within our own family units mm -hmm. to begin to pass these things on uh, to our kids and our grandkids and uh, the, the people around us, cousins, aunts, whoever it may be, uh, who are not children of God uh, need to hear it. So I love this relationship between uh, Paul and Timothy, and you, and you just see it spring forth so vividly in the things that he writes. Oh, I, I amen that heartily. Bill, I'm reminded uh, from Scripture, actually, the danger of not telling the story and that it is a real danger that is recorded in Scripture. Uh, Judges chapter 2 is the passage I'm thinking of. It's verse 7 through 12. 
an Old Testament passage, but listen to this. It says, and the Israelites served the Lord throughout the, throughout the lifetime of Joshua and the leaders who outlived him. Those who had seen all the great things the Lord had done for Israel. Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110. They buried him in the land that he had been allocated. Then it goes on to say, after that generation died, verse 10, another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things he had done for Israel. After Joshua and his generation dies, then another generation is, is, is raised up and they don't remember the mighty things that had been done for Israel. Verse 11 of Judges chapter 2 says, the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight, and served the images of Baal. They abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who had brought them out of Egypt. They went after other gods, worshiping the gods of the people around them, and they angered the <coughs> Lord. Mm. Bill, we are reminded that the story is something that must be told, and there is a real danger if that story is not told. Yeah, that's it's absolutely right, Doug. What you see uh, in, in that section, throughout the book of, of Judges, beginning with that, I mean, Joshua kept a tight rein on things while he was living. Uh, the truth is that when he died, everything changed. And uh, throughout the book of Judges, you see that God will raise up a judge who will bring deliverance to these people, and then they will turn right back around and do it again. And most often, uh, they get themselves involved in idolatry, like the nations around them. And, and so you see that over and over and over again. They're just, they're, they're, they try to be faithful, then they're not faithful. And God, uh, when they come back, God does something to bring them back. And, and uh, that whole cycle uh, goes over and over and over uh, again. And you're right. The reason for it is they, they weren't passing these, this message of who God is down to their children. That was yeah. the key to the whole thing. Give it to your children. Uh, uh, Moses talks about that in, in, in Deuteronomy he about does. raising your kids uh, like that. You pass it down through those generations uh, in exactly that way. And, it's, and, and the same thing is true of Christianity. We have a message that our children, first of all, need to hear. When Sherry and I became Christians, one of the things that we realized uh, immediately, and, and we already had uh, our daughter, Christina. We had two more that would be coming. That's right. but, but the first thing we realized immediately was we wanted them to hear this message. We wanted them to understand this message. We wanted them to embrace this message. And they've done that. And, and our grandkids have done that. And Praise so God. that's how it goes down through the generations. We stop doing that. It will die in your family. Absolutely. And, and you look at this and, and see what a tragedy end uh, took place for, for Israel. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. They served the images of Baal. They abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who brought them out. Of, and he goes right back. He's telling the story. Who brought them out of Egypt. Yes. You know, they needed to remember that. They needed yeah. to remember the and, Passover. And they that wasn't rem- a history lesson. No. He says that over and over again. That was a lesson about the power of God. That's right. And, and so it is so important. The danger of not telling the story is real. And it is recorded in Scripture for a reason. Uh, if we don't tell this story, we're destined to repeat these same things. Yeah. Even as a nation, Bill, think about our nation right now. What, what, is, what has been the problem with our nation? It isn't, it isn't that our nation doesn't have money or it doesn't have natural resources or it doesn't have uh, any of those kind of things. The problem is that we have forgotten our God. We, we've stopped telling the story. And we've allowed a generation of people to grow Grow up believing that God has had nothing to do with this with this great country. Uh, this country has been a great country, Bill, because God made her great. Oh, I'm telling you, and you and I believe that with all of our heart that America exists and is here because of God. God brought it into existence, and it's done Amen. great things over the years. When you stop and think about it, uh, the reality is the gospel has been preached from the shores of this country more than probably any place in the world, except maybe in the first century, by these mm. uh, folks who were 
were doing it then, but from the shores of America, it has gone into all the world. And, and you're right, beginning back in the 60s, and I'm old enough to remember that, uh, beginning back in the early 60s, uh, we had the assault on God, mm. taking, taking prayer out of schools and, and doing all of that, reminding everyone that we're not a Christian nation, that in fact we have multiple different faiths in this nation. You can be this, you can be that. And, and prior to that, I'm telling you, Christianity was dominant. Uh, not, not politically it wasn't dominant, but it was, it was dominant from the standpoint that it governed morals and how we behaved and acted uh, toward one another. And we have seen all of that uh, over these last 50, 60 years change dramatically uh, because God has been forgotten. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we've seen it bearing itself out now uh, in the way this society is living and treating each other. Absolutely. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's just always going to have problems. You cannot abandon God uh, and expect God to bless a nation. He's That's not right. going to. And more than that, they're just natural consequences from it. When you abandon the teachings of God, uh, you, you can't help but reap what you sow. It's just going to be a natural consequence of those things. That's that, right. Uh, when, you, when you sow of the flesh, of the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. Yes. It, it just comes that way. And, and there's no way of getting around it. I mean, there, there are people, Bill, who believe that if we could just get those, those Christians out of our minds and out of our lives and out of our, out of our way, <laughs> then we could really have a utopia. We could have, you know, a, a, a paradise here on earth yeah. and that it would be good for everyone and that tolerance would be the great virtue and we'd all love each other and we'd all care about each other. That is the furthest thing from the truth. When you remove God, when you remove the love of God, you will have everybody killing each other. Yeah, it does just the opposite just of what the they opposite. think that, uh, that it will do. I mean, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, there's no, there's no question about it. Uh, and I'm going to tell you something. If you could have that possibility of kind of silencing all Christians, and it's never going to happen, but if you could do that, not only would you end up with chaos and immorality, we're, we're seeing it right now That's when right. God is pushed out, but I'm going to tell you, you will never, ever, Ever silence God, ever. You can ignore him, you can shove him aside, you can do whatever you want. You will never silence God. And I'm telling you in the end, God's going to have his way and his word. Absolutely. This morning you are listening to Bible Talk Live. We're glad you're with us. Whether you're on 1430 AM WFOB or whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, looking at the behind the scenes aspects. If they're watching the behind the scenes aspect, they're seeing us throwing our arms around and yeah. all kinds of things here, Bill. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're a little animated today as we... Uh, yeah, we get a little excited A little sometimes. bit excited as we talk about this good stuff. <laughs> and I'm sure they can hear it in our voice on the radio as well. Um, <laughs> but you are listening to Bible Talk Live. It is a presentation from Christ Church in Bowling Green, Ohio, and all things Christ Church can be found at ccbg.life. That's ccbg.life. You can also call us, by the way, if you still want to do that, 419 <laughs> Get it right, Doug. 419 354 1176. There you go. I haven't dialed that number in a long time. Every time I, I call it, I just hit a certain button on my phone and I don't have to, or just say, call the office, call yeah. the church, yeah. call the, you know, whatever I'm doing. So 354 1176. That's 419 354 1176. So let's prepare a little bit. And by the way, this is going to be a two parter. We'll not get through all of this in one session. That's you right. can't put two preachers together and expect us to get through a passage of Scripture. I don't know what we would have done with Brian. I'm telling you, we'd have lost a third of our conversation here with Brian here. We'd have had to make it a three-parter. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the preparation for our study here. The history of 2 Timothy. This is probably the last letter the Apostle Paul wrote. And so when you think about it that way, he is an older man now and in prison, once again in Rome, Paul has been deserted by many of his friends and is likely facing the prospect of death right now. Before he was imprisoned in a house and had some freedoms, before he was imprisoned in a house and had some freedoms, but now he's in a dungeon and it looks like it's not going, and it looks like he's not going to make it. Uh, Paul is feeling, I think, uh, Bill, the strong importance of passing on the ministry to young Timothy. Uh, listen to what he writes here in 2 Timothy 4, verse 6 through 8. He says, As for me, 
My life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And this prize is not just for me, says Paul, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. It appears to me, Bill, that Paul believes he's coming to the end. Oh, I think so too. And I, you know, I can only imagine Paul has uh, embarked on uh, three huge missionary journeys. He has spread the gospel uh, all over the Roman Empire. Now he's in the very city of, of Rome itself, uh, reaching, by the way, in, into the house of the Caesar. Yeah. Uh, even. I, I mean, uh, it, he had a powerful ministry. He has established, not only made Christians, but established churches in all kinds of uh, uh, places uh, throughout the Roman Empire. He has shaken the Roman Empire, if you want to know the truth. Mm-hmm. And, and so this man has done a great work. And so when he gets to the end of his life, I mean, he's, he's talking to a young preacher, and, uh, and, and there may have been others that he wrote yeah. letters to that we don't have, but he tells him in no uncertain terms, preach the word, yeah. preach the word, preach the word. In season and out in of season. In season and out of season, yeah. <laughs> I love it. And, and, uh, and then he, he tells uh, Timothy, he says, please come to me as soon as you can. Yeah. So I think, I, I think there's no question but what he is reaching the end, he knows he's, knows he's reaching the end, mm-hmm. and he's leaving all of this. Now, we, we say often, Doug, yeah. that, that God takes care of things. These are God's people who handle things. But I'm telling you, when you're in a position like Paul, you feel responsible uh, to all of that. During his uh, second and third missionary journeys, he went back to churches he had established yeah. previously. Yeah. He cared about these people. He cared what was happening. Amen. He cared what they were doing. He cared how things were going. And, uh, and, and I, think, I, I think there was a concern for him about what's going to happen when he, leave, when he left. And, and so Timothy and, and Titus and, and young men like that are becoming really, really important to him because he knows they're going to carry on the work. Yeah, they must pass it on. Now, Paul actually establishes the theme of passing on the story early in his letter. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3, Timothy sa- he says, Timothy, I thank God for you, the God I serve with a clear conscience, just as my ancestors did. Night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. See, he's getting this thought process of passing these things on. My ancestors did this. They passed it on to me. 2 Timothy 1, 5, I remember your genuine faith. For you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois Mm -hmm. and your mother Eunice. Mm -hmm. And so you you see again this idea that that of passing on the faith, passing it on. Uh, And 2 Timothy 1 verse 13. Hold on to the pattern of wholesome teaching you learned from me. (laughs) I passed it on to you. And so I'm passing it on to you, Timothy, so that you will pass it on to others. Paul seems to be establishing this principle, Bill, from the very beginning. Yeah, he really does. And and, uh, you you see it in his uh, life, in Timothy's life. Uh, And and now uh, Paul is wanting him to really embrace that. There's a real dynamic in Timothy's family. And Paul's reminding him of that. Came through his mother, his grandmother, grandmother. Uh, these people were, were people of faith. And, and so they've already passed it down now, three generations. Now Paul adds to it yeah. uh, because he is an inspired uh, uh, preacher. He's an inspired writer. And so he knows things that, that others may not know mm-hmm. yet. And so he is passing those things on to Timothy. Uh, but, but he's gotten what he got originally through his own family. And so that became important. I, I'm just so reminded, <laughs> Doug, that some of the great families mm. that I've seen over the years, and there have been many, yeah. uh, that, that's been true of those families. They, they have passed that down yeah. through the generations to their children and grandchildren. And, uh, and I always wanted to do that, and so did you, and you've yeah. done that. And, and your generation, I mean, you learned what you learned from your mother. I did, maybe and my your grandmother. Grandparents, I okay. did, my grandmother too. So, so you relate to Timothy here. <laughs> I'm very much like Timothy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but you see that very same thing. And I'll tell you, when, when in families where that's passed down, those families are different. Yeah, they are. Um, you know, I will lovingly use the phrase from time to time from the farming community. I'll say, that uh, boy over there comes from good stock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had a good mama. He had a good father. Yeah. Uh, he comes and we're from, not just talking about his physique. Right? That's right. I mean, we're that's talking. right. We're saying he came from good stock. Yeah. And, uh 
I, I remember uh, I, I said to uh, my son Tyler, to his wife Leanne, when they got married, I, I said to her, I said, I want you to know, Tyler comes from a long line of lovers. <laughs> His grandpa was married to my grandmother for over 50 years. Yeah. You know, my dad was married to my mom for 62 years. Yeah. I've been married to Annette for 40 years yeah. now. Now, it wasn't all that time when he got married. Yeah. But yeah. I wanted her to know there's a history here. Yeah. And, and, and that matters. It does matter. Our family is exactly <laughs> like that. When you see many families yep. shattered with multiple grandparents on every side, and and I'm not criticizing folks That's with right. that, but, but when you see that, you see a family that has not embraced fully uh, Jesus Christ. And, and so when, when you see a family that has, where it's being passed down, you see the, the lasting legacy that it leaves uh, in marriages. People are married for a long time, and you don't see many divorces yeah. in all of that. You see people intact together, raising kids, because their eyes and their focus is on something greater, yeah. that place called heaven that I yeah, talked right. about. It's all on that. It's all on being with Christ uh, when you leave this world. And so that becomes everything uh, to you because this world is not my home. It's temporary. Amen. It's not going to last long and it's not going to be here forever. And so I'm wanting what God has to offer for all of this. Amen. So I want to kind of set up next week a little bit for us, Bill, because we're obviously going to be back into this passage again. We've not uh, uh, worn it out by any stretch of the imagination. And so kind of the, the theme that I want to look at is to pass the story of Christ on, we must first, uh, Paul says, be strong in the grace of Christ, like a surrendering soldier, like an honest athlete, and a hardworking farmer. So I want to look at those aspects as we, as we come into next week and talk about the importance of turning these truths over to trustworthy people who will then turn them over to other people as well as we continue to pass the torch on. It must be passed on. That is, that is something, when a, when a church bill loses sight of, the, 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 the term that we use is evangelism. We evangelize. But when they lose sight of sharing the gospel with others, you can, you can watch that church start to die. There is an importance of continuing to tell the story. There's an importance to continue to disciple, to make people learners of Christ. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And I've seen it and you've seen it. I've seen churches die uh, because of it. They, they kind of walk away from the gospel. It becomes about other things. Yep. Sometimes it becomes about events or, or, or get-togethers or, you know, it can be a million different things that suddenly become the focus of that church. And when, it, it, when that happens, it is a church in decline. I was at a uh, youth rally. No, it was a regular rally one time, adults. Uh, there were probably 12,000 people in the auditorium. I'll probably tell this story again next week. Okay. Uh, but uh, the guy, uh, as he started to preach, I can't remember what he preached about. It's been a long time ago. <laughs> but as he started to preach, he began to ask people how they came to the gospel. And he asked people, how many of you came through a bus ministry, which was really big years yes, ago, you know, brought, bringing kids to church to, on, a, on a bus. Uh, how many of you came because of uh, you know, you picked up a brochure or you saw something on TV. He just went through a whole litany of things. And, and you see a little smattering of hands here and there. Not many, but a little smattering of hands. And then all of a sudden he asked, the last question was, how many of you came to Christ because of family or friends? And I'm telling you, Doug, I, I don't know what the percentage, but it was probably 90% <laughs> or more of the people in that audience raised their hands. That's how we evangelize. That's how we lead uh, people to Christ to the people that we know, and it's always been like that. We're going to talk about that. Yes. But we want, we want folks to know, I, I think especially today, that they may not come from a family of, of Christians. Maybe, maybe they didn't come, maybe they don't have a mother or a father or a grandmother or a grandfather who were uh, children of God, and maybe they're thinking about it or their first generation. But you can start this in your generation. Amen. That's what you can do. You can begin to, with your generation, first of all, to embrace it yourself, to live it yourself, and, and then to pass it on to your kids. And I, I, and I don't care how old your kids are now. You can begin to pass that on right now, today, and begin that legacy of faith in Jesus, in your family. And I'm telling you, it'll make all the difference in the world. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. And we hope that next week, 
Same time, you'll join us again. We'll be right here at Bible Talk Live.